Welcome to the Moms Without Capes podcast, Elle. It's great to have you here. Thank you. Nice to be with you. So Elle Hart is a self-intelligence consultant who brings clarity to people's strengths. As you'll soon learn, her life has completely had completely unraveled and she had no idea what her new life would look like. Elle learned how to navigate the everyday struggles and life changes by becoming more aware of herself, accepting who she was, and embracing how she did things best in order to successfully manage her relationship with others as well as with herself. Now she helps other women do the same so that they can ultimately feel empowered every day. She created her consulting business, Feel Empowered Every Day, based on her desire to provide others what she now knows would have helped her through various points of struggle in her life. In today's interview, Elle will be sharing with us how to stay true to ourselves and how to lean into our, into our strengths so that we can feel empowered every day. So before we dive into that, can you share with us more about your journey and what got you to the place you are today? Yeah, absolutely. So um, growing up, um, my my mom was a single mom and she um, did an amazing job taking care of my sister and I, but she had a lot of struggles um, with a variety of issues um, while, while I was growing up. So I never had a real strong sense of myself. I was very outgoing, which I think some people think that if you're outgoing, that automatically thinks that you're confident and that you have, you know, a high self-esteem. And I'm here to tell you, that's not always the case. It's just personality, but you can still on the inside really struggle with who you are. And that was me in a nutshell, my teenage years. And, um, I ended up getting married and starting my family while I was still in college. I um, married my college sweetheart. And so I went straight from college life to parenting and family life, which I was fine with. I, 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 I loved the only thing I ever knew I wanted to do in life was be a mom. So I was loving that. I um, had three boys it turned out that because of the way that we started out, it actually financially made more sense for me to stay home with the kids at that point. So I just ended up being a stay-at-home mom for 25 years, raising the three boys. And I did love it. Um, But everything I did in my life was centered around somebody else, right? Right. All yep. of us, moms, <laughs> all of us moms, and especially stay at home moms can are like, oh, amen. I hear yeah. that. I really understand that. And, you know, you struggle with that. How do I still be myself? How do I even figure myself out? Especially when you, you know? become a parent at a young age, you know, I, I didn't have that time to learn me as an adult um, before I went into that that journey. So um, I ended up finding myself the same year that we were about to empty nest. um, We decided to divorce at the same time. Mm -hmm. And um, I all of a sudden realized like, wow, I am now going from surrounding myself by everybody else and being caught up in their lives and their schedules and things that are important to them to who am oh, I? <laughs> what, what do what I do? Mean? What does this mean for me? Like, wait a minute, I actually have to think about me and look at me and figure me out. Like I it's easier to think about everybody else mm-hmm. and, and worry about them than it is ourselves sometimes. So I ended up um realizing that in order to grow I needed to go. I knew if I stayed in that same house and that with my same friends, which were wonderful and amazing through the whole thing, um, but I couldn't stay in that same scenario. I I just, for me, I, I couldn't do it. So what did that look like though? I had no idea. My, my boys were off, but they weren't settled yet in right. their you know, their adult lives. (laughs) Right. So it didn't like, oh, it makes sense to go live near my kids because they're Mm -hmm. now getting married and having kids. They weren't there yet. Mm -hmm. They're not there. So 
I literally opened up a map and looked at it and tried to figure out (laughs) where do I belong? Mm -hmm. (laughs) And my youngest son decided, I was in Chicago at the time, and my youngest son decided to go to San Diego State. And I was like, perfect. I had wanted (laughs) to go to California, but that was too far away from my boys. And I couldn't remove myself that far, but because he was going to be in the same area and he was like, no way you are not following (laughs) me to college. I do not need my mom there with me. And I'm like, I promise you, you will have your life. I will have mine. Trust me. I have my own stuff to worry about. (laughs) I will not be uh, trying to be the house mom of the fraternity. (laughs) So, yeah, his biggest um, fear. <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So I promised him and San Diego County is so vast that mm-hmm. we're literally like 45 minutes apart from each other. So um he moved, he got settled and then shortly after I went through the process of selling the majority of my belongings, selling my house, paring down um, to go to a small apartment and live by myself for the first time in my entire life. I was um, 48. There are all kinds of emotions. All (laughs) kinds of emotions. And I knew if I packed up and I drove, that would give me way too much time in my head. Mm -hmm. I would freak out. And at some point I'd inevitably turn around and go back to the comfort zone and not follow through with it. Did your other two sons stay in Chicago? My other two sons at the time, one, my oldest one was in Tulsa okay, and my um, middle one was fin- finishing up school in Dayton, Ohio. Okay. So, um, yeah. So I was like, oh my gosh, I, I don't know what this, you know, I, yeah. I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't be in that car for 30 hours. So I gave my son my car and I took a one-way flight. I hired somebody to move my stuff and my dog. And they were nice enough to put my dog in the moving truck with them. (laughs) And I got on a one-way ticket. And um, a funny story with that is I landed at night. I wasn't able to get in my apartment until the next morning. So I just took a shuttle from um, the airport to a hotel. And on that shuttle was me and all Southwest employees. And so they were asking me, are you visiting vacation, you know, Mm -hmm. here for work? So I told them, I said, well, actually, I I just got divorced and I'm (laughs) I'm literally moving here right now. And I don't know a single person in this town. (laughs) I'm just moving here. And they cheered and applauded and were so excited for me. And most people, when you tell them that you just got divorced, you know, you get the pat on the back. Oh, I'm so sorry. They didn't do that. Yeah. You're like on this whole new adventure. (laughs) Oh my gosh. They were, they gave me that energy that I needed and that enthusiasm that like, oh my gosh, they're like so excited. Like welcome to your new chapter. (laughs) I can do this. And I went with two mindsets because I was a mess during the divorce. I was an absolute mess. Mm -hmm. And so I went with two mindsets because I thought I can't carry this with me. Um, so I, decided that I was going to be very cognizant of living in the present moment and just, Hey, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. I'm having a long vacation. Then Mm -hmm. right now, I'm just going to enjoy being here today. I'm going to worry about the day that's in front of me. And that's all. I'm not going to worry about the fact that I don't have a car. I don't have a job. I don't know anybody, (laughs) all these major things that could totally stress you out. I'm like, Nope, I can't go there. And I'm not going to go backwards in the past. I had spent a year and a half wallowing, figuring myself out, going through all the muck. And I'm going to leave that behind me now, but I'm not going to have anxiety about the future either. I'm going to be right here in the present moment. And then the second thing that I went with is I'm going to let go of expectations. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to let go of the expectations that people had on me for so many years. Right. Let go of expectations that might still be on me or the expectations we put on ourselves mm-hmm. and expectations that I was used to setting up for other people too. Because during that time, I also had to look at myself and say, okay, yes, it's easy to say he did, he did, he did, he did. It's all his fault. Mm-hmm. But that really wasn't going to get me to grow 
and evolve the right. way that I needed to, I had to look at myself and say, how did I contribute? What did I do? What could I, how could I look at myself differently? Um, and drop the expectations and, and go forward. Yeah. I love that story. All the, you have an amazing story. Now, how long ago was all of that? Like how long yeah. did you move to California? The divorce started in 2016 and I moved in 2018. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. Super inspiring. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. So let's jump into what we're talking about today, because you brought up a lot of things that I'm sure are going to be integrated in today's, into today's conversation. Um, a lot about those expectations and being able to live in the present take certain steps that you have been able to master or that you're still working on. I know we're all absolutely progress, right? 100% still working. We can hear your story and be like, Oh, you've arrived. But as we all know, we're continually like working and striving to become our best self. So mm -hmm. uh, we want to learn from you today. And how do, how do we begin to, cause you went from like that stay at home mom. I was a stay at home mom for 14 years. And okay. that was really when, um, 12 years in was when I really started that questioning of like giving myself permission to like do things for myself, like outside of my role as mom and wife and, and really diving into like doing that self-exploration and reflection piece. But I want to know, how did you start like finding yourself like aside from like you took this huge like you completely removed yourself from one you know physic physical environment and put yourself in this whole new place mm -hmm. but what did that look like for you as far as how are you able to like recognize or find who you were like just just yeah. who you are I was gonna say like your strengths and and your weakness like all of those things that make you 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 like those unique pieces what what were some of the things or what can you offer to us yeah well I had let for so many years my identity and my worth be defined by other people and I needed to figure out how to define them in myself. And like you mentioned a minute ago, it's still a struggle for me all the time. It really is. And um, I just tried to quiet myself and, and listen and pay attention to what, what made me feel good? What made me feel stressed? What, how was I talking to myself in my own head? Was I... Was I saying my own words to myself or were I, yeah, was, was I else's voice? Yeah. Exactly. And that's still hard to this day. I still hear that voice in my head, unfortunately, but um, I've, I've gotten better about how to go about it. And so I just really leaned into trusting myself and, and giving myself grace that, for the fact that I might make some mistakes and that's going to be okay. Yeah. Because then I can learn from them, or it just means that whatever that was, wasn't meant to happen. And so then I can take a different direction and, and go that route instead. Um, so I, I did that, but then I also took like a whole variety of those assessments, the Myers-Briggs, the, okay. okay, the, the did it, yeah. all that kind of yeah. stuff, you Plus know, strengths. <laughs> right. All of it. And you know, it gave you, gave me a little glimpse, mm -hmm. but none of them really had like this profound impact on me. Well, I had taken the Clifton strengths and, um, again, found it interesting, but that was kind mm -hmm. of it. And I was attending a leadership conference for, um, before I got divorced, I had started dabbling with like doTERRA essential oils. Mm -hmm. And so they have different conferences and different things going on. Right. So I was listening to their speakers and I thought, okay, here comes somebody else talking about building their business and the whole thing. This guy got up on stage and he started talking about the Clifton strengths that had nothing to do with essential oils or network yeah. marketing or any of it, just people. Right. Right. And I'm like, hold on, wait a minute. This is making so much sense. Like you are speaking to me about it instead of just reading some report or, you know, whatever. And the results made so much more sense 
when I listened to the way that he talked about him. So I started stalking him like crazy. I listened to every video he put out. I followed all of his trainings, everything that he did. And I learned everything that he had learned about the Clifton strengths themselves, mm-hmm. each one of the 34 traits. And the fact even that, you know, most of those assessments, like I talked about, they put you in a category or a box or you're given right. a number right. or a set of letters or whatever. And it's like, okay, this is great, but so funny. I've got to, I wanted to grab this because I have right next to me. It's my Clifton strengths. Oh, like, perfect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I'm excited to hear them. Yeah. And I stuck it right there. Like I did yeah. it probably a year or two ago. <laughs> keep it, keep it there. I want to, I want to hear them. Absolutely. And, and the funny thing is like, I thought, okay, but that really isn't like, there's so many different things about me. I have nuances, like I'm unique that right. that doesn't fully fit me. Well, with the Clifton Strengths, the, the 34 traits, all of us possess, but we use them differently. And so no two people's results will ever come back the same. Hmm. And I it, didn't realize that. Just, that. Yeah. yeah. I like I, I mean, just wrote down like my top five. Like I didn't even look at the other one like, oh. And, and that's the funny thing is that that's what Gallup usually has people do, mm-hmm. right? They focus on the top five. What he does is he takes you to, through the top 10 and also the bottom five. And the bottom yeah. five make so much sense because that's where we go when we're stressed, when we think we should be more like other people, mm-hmm. when we're trying to be something that we're not, when we're doubting ourselves. So all of those moments that I was feeling stress throughout, when I looked back throughout my marriage, throughout my childhood, throughout the transition, yeah, yeah, the move, everything, I realized, yes, I can see where I was coming at it from one of these types of traits that just doesn't fit me well. They're not your weaknesses. Yeah. We think of weakness. We think of something that we should work on and try to make better. Right. These are things that we want to avoid. Like I want to redo it. I'm going to redo it and see, because I didn't even pay attention to what that. <laughs> uh, well, if you took it not too long ago, you could actually go in and just unlock okay. to get the full 34. So you don't I have do. to pay for the full okay. test over again. Okay. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, it just opened a whole new world up to me of understanding myself yeah. and being able to have permission to be me. Because there's nothing wrong with any of the traits. There's nothing good about certain ones and bad Mm -hmm. about other ones. Now, what I have learned too is there are bridges and tunnels to each one. So we have to, there are things to be mindful of. So even though you've got your top five there, so what what are your top five? Um, Futuristic, focus, learner, intellection. No, is that right? Intellection. Intellection. And achiever. achiever. Okay. Yeah. So quite a few of strategic thinking strengths. Yeah. So you like to, yeah. you like to think, create, learn, and be in your own head a lot. <laughs> yes, that's pretty descriptive. <laughs> yeah, you need a little time to yourself to just mm. like process. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what was the number five again? Um, achiever. Achiever. Okay. So okay. all of that thinking, creating, learning that you're doing is to get you to accomplish something. You right. always have a goal in mind. Yes, I, I do. Always. Like, that's absolutely true. Yeah. Always working yeah. for something. Yes. So your number five is actually your compass strength. So what when you, mean? it means when you drop down into your bottoms, that's the one that's going to pull you back on track and get you heading okay. to your true self. Yeah. So that's the one that you think of and you think, okay, what are my goals again? What am I trying to accomplish? Oh, Yeah. Now I can go about it in my top strengths. I can think about the future and my ideation and get excited by my ideas and embrace the fact that I might be a bit of a daydreamer and, Mm. and I'm always thinking about what's going to come next. That's okay. Right. Because that's how you operate. Now, somebody else might have those traits kind of low and that might stress them out and that's okay because mm-hmm. that's how they operate. Mm-hmm. So we all use the same systems, but we use them Definitely. so different from yeah. one another. Yeah. And just what you're saying about like the true self, like, uh, and that kind of circles back to that expectation, like the expectations we mm-hmm. place on ourselves, and yeah. really getting in touch with 
with who we are and giving ourselves that permission. That's what you said that I wanted to talk about, like giving ourselves permission to be ourselves because for so long we, we are like behind like our role as mom and as wife and like fulfilling these roles and these expectations that come along with it. Right. And then we start, like, they become so ingrained in us that we forget who we are, who that true self is. And we can parent and be mom leaning into our strengths. Mm -hmm. And sure, still, yeah. that's how we can do it being us. Right. Now, my number one strength is something I had been chastised for, for years. What, so what I- What is your number one? Now you've got to hear What is your number one strength? My number one is woo, which is win others over. Oh, and okay. It means okay. That I love to meet new people. I love to like try to figure out how we have a connection. So immediately I just want to chat and, and figure figure them out. And I want to see if there's a likability factor between us, like, like the how, you know, like yeah. I'll kind of, and I've individual individualization high as well. So I'll kind of, sometimes I can morph myself to, to make the other person who's around me feel comfortable so that they like me because mm-hmm. it's all, it's not about me. It's an influencing strength. So it's about how I'm bringing other people forward. Okay. And so when you feel more comfortable around me, then that makes me feel good because I'm breaking the ice and I'm putting down that barrier. And now you feel comfortable. And that to me is a win. Yeah. And so that means that I'm, you know, like I said before, when I'm younger, I'm outgoing and mm-hmm. I'd like to meet people and I, I'd like to. Right. So, so that was coming out. Yes. Yeah. And that was not highly regarded. Right. Um, right. In, in my situation. Yeah. So that was, that was hard for me to, you know, that's a perfect situation where I was taking something that is comes naturally to me and something that I'm gifted at. I never would have thought of that as a gift ever. Right. Right. Yeah. Cause when you first said it, winning other people over, like that doesn't seem like <laughs> that's not a gift, but it is a gift when you can help make other people feel comfortable. Yes. It is. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely Especially like when you're in a situation and you can kind of scan the room and say, okay, mm-hmm. I can tell that this one is feeling uncomfortable, uncomfortable. right now. And, yeah. They're not loving being in this situation. Yeah. I'm going to go over there and win them over and yeah. I'm going to put them at ease. Right. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So yeah. let me see. I'm looking over my questions. Mm-hmm. Where do I want to go next? Um, so you talk some about, um, emotional intelligence. Right. And I I feel like that what you just said was as your biggest strength has a lot to do with emotional intelligence, but talk, can you talk to us more about what that has to do with strengths? Like when we we improve our emotional intelligence, we get more in touch with, with what our individual strengths are. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And like I said, I, I was going through some self-work to realize where, where was I falling short? what, what do I need to work on? And, um, aside from later realizing that a lot of what I was doing was coming from my bottom strengths. Um, I also realized that I didn't have the highest emotional intelligence and funny enough, emotional intelligence accounts for 80% of success in life across the board. So for it those doesn't of, matter if it's you your personal explain, life, professional life. Can you explain for the listeners, like if they don't, if they're not really sure what that means. I know that's like a, a big buzzword nowadays, but like those that aren't familiar with emotional intelligence, can you yeah, talk a little bit more about what that is? To put it real plainly, it's like the soft skills. It's the skills that we used to not think were very um, important. Important. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Very important. But we realized that, Hey, being able to manage my behavior and first, I have to be able to manage my thoughts. I have to have control over my emotions, my emotions, which means I'm not trying to control everybody else's emotions and behaviors. Right. I'm I'm focusing on me. And then I take that information and how do I now manage myself and deal with other people around me? So if you're in the office place and you're a hothead or everything that somebody says causes you to be super sensitive and have a meltdown you don't have a strong emotional intelligence then, and that's going to affect your job and your success. Um, So when you have a handle over dealing with 
And it, you know, I don't love emotional intelligence. And, and that's actually why I created my own framework of self intelligence, because I felt like it was too tied to just emotions. And right. it's a lot more than that. Right. Right. But the reason why I, I have pulled that in is because when I moved, I needed to find a job and I had never worked like full. I mean, I did right, like right. work outside the home. Yeah. Yeah. I had never, I had fun jobs and stuff, mm. but never like a full-time job or anything. And I ended up working in a middle school and these kids, I was the, I was the instructional aide. So I was kind of like the, the adult in the room that nobody really understood why you were there. <laughs> which was super uncomfortable, but the kids just felt my energy or something. And they mm-hmm. gravitated to, if they had a problem, Hey, can I pull you outside and talk to you? Hey, I, I'm stressed mm-hmm. about this. Or I saw that they were stressed and said, Hey, let's talk about what's going on with you. I didn't care about the grades. I wasn't obsessed right. with the assignments. I was not there for the big academic piece. I was there to support the kids. And so I learned there's got to be a way to help these guys. I didn't want to do the typical therapy. I I didn't want to go back to school for, you know, to be a school counselor or anything like that. And I realized that, hey, what was missing in me all of those years was emotional intelligence. And I bet that is what could help these kids. And so I started studying that and I became um, a certified practitioner. Okay. And, um, and that's what pulled it into the strength. So then once I started learning more and more and more about the Clifton strengths and, and Eddie's way of, of not defining them, but giving meaning to right. each one. Right. Once I learned that, then I was like, oh my gosh, this is the foundation for self-awareness, which is the foundational piece to both my self-intelligence and emotional intelligence. Mm. And I think that's the piece that most of us get caught up on. We don't know how to be really self-aware because we're looking through a lens that is smudged and tainted with all of our all previous of experiences, our judgment, all that yeah. stuff, right? Yeah. It's hard to see ourselves clearly. Again, I never would have been like, if somebody said, what's your strongest gift? I have no idea. Oh, winning others <laughs> over. <laughs> and then she was second, that easy. <laughs> my second one is activator, which means like, mm-hmm. I'm ready to take action. So when I meet you and I'm like, oh, here's our connection. All right. How can I help you? What yeah. can we do? Like, I want to help propel you in the direction mm. you want to go. I don't want to put my agenda on you. I don't know what that right. is. Right. I want to help you go where you want. And so I'm very impatient. Well, I don't think impatient would be a, something you would consider <laughs> as a gift either. <laughs> but as activator, yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. So once I saw that, I'm like, wow, I'm seeing myself in a completely different light than I had, but it was, it all makes sense. It, all of it is completely me. But when I pull back the curtain and I wipe the smudges away and I really see me for my true self and it's unbiased, right? Mm -hmm. It wasn't me spending time with a therapist saying, you know what? You're really good at winning people over. You're really good. I wouldn't have believed them. I wouldn't have been, you know, I would have been like, "Ah, yeah, I guess. But what is that? When you see it on paper, it's an assessment. It's, Mm -hmm. it's been proven. There's been now 30 million people who have taken the Clifton Strengths assessment. It was written by a positive psychologist who studied this like crazy it means something. So when you Mm -hmm. see it there, it's like, oh, I have this unbiased third party objective way to see myself. Yeah. And so that's what I use now as the foundation to building your self-intelligence, which is based off emotional intelligence. Have you, um, have you done work like with the Enneagram as well? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. What Enneagram number are you? (laughs) I am, I believe I am I always confuse it. Am I three wing two or two wing three? I think I'm two wing three. Okay. And what is two? Because I'm a three. I don't even know what my wings are. I I should go back and look. Yeah, I haven't. Is two, two is not like the peace one, is it? 
I don't think but, so. I'm okay, definitely, okay. I don't do what well, I have harmony low. I don't do yeah. well when I'm trying to become the peacekeeper. Okay. I get manipulative when I do that, and that's not good. Got you. Okay. Um, I think it's more like the it might be the helper one. Okay. Maybe. Okay. I don't. Re- I don't yeah. remember. Yeah. Exactly. No, I'm just curious. If but that, I, like, because that, that if that ties into one of my recent clients is is very heavily um involved or whatever in the Enneagram. Yeah. And oh so yeah, you I, can people are really like into that. <laughs> right. Exactly. I, like, I don't even know what wings I am. I just did like because I, I love doing those kinds of assessments. And right. Like, they all really like some of them really validate like different things like that I've noticed about myself. And I'm mm-hmm. like, yeah, like I can see that. I can see where they the, that comes out as that answer. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. So I asked her, I said How does this play? Like what, with the information I'm giving you, Mm -hmm. what is that playing? And she said, it basically is just like that really detailed, it supported everything Mm -hmm. that came back in her Enneagram and that she leans into with her Enneagram number, but it just gave so much more detail Mm -hmm. and personalized explanation of her Enneagram. Right. You know, yeah. So it just kind of took it a lot deeper, I guess, Mm -hmm. a way to describe that. Okay. So, how do we, taking back into the mom mode, how do we stay true to ourselves when we are in mom mode? Yeah. So, again, you, you know your strengths, you understand them. And And again, like I alluded to, Gallup gives you a huge report when you take Mm -hmm. them. But those are definitions. And they don't worry as much about what other strengths are around it. So like I said, I have activator number two. Well, one of my clients is activator number two. But her activator shows up a little bit different than mine does because of what other strengths are around it. Right. And so all of ours mean something a little bit different. So I bring a very personalized meaning to each of them. So when you know that and you understand those things, then you parent and you go in mom mode, leaning into your top strengths and you become aware of when you're dipping into your bottom strengths. Right. Right. Um, And that's going to help you be a mom as your true self. Like I have empathy as number three. It was always And it still is Mm -hmm. very natural for me to put myself in my kid's position and Mm -hmm. really feel and understand where they're coming from with with things that works for me because that's what I naturally do now. So you're able to parent using your strengths. uh, Totally, totally parent using your strengths, but you have to be mindful of each of the strengths too. Even though empathy is high for me, it's natural. I do it well. I serve myself and other people when I lean into it, but I have to learn to set boundaries mm-hmm. because you can take too much of a good thing is not a good thing. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes, you know, each one of these, you have, you have something to be mindful of too. And that's something right. that I walk through with my clients as well. Like, okay, even though I feel your pain, I understand these things. I have to set a boundary to it. And I caught, I did that way too much with my ex. Mm-hmm. I, I put myself in positions I shouldn't have been in because of my empathy. I did, was not good at setting boundaries. Right. So now that I'm aware of that, I can say, okay, I'm going to lean into my empathy strength. I'm going to use this and I'm going to love on it, but I'm going to be aware of it too. Yeah. And how, yeah. how do you, how to really use it? They're like tools, right? It's like tools, right. how to use the tool, but just do the things that come natural to you and listen to yourself as to what feels good. Mm -hmm. So what final advice can you offer moms who may have felt lost in their mom hat and feeling like they just don't, they're not empowered? Yeah. I think uh, give yourself grace, first of all, but also remember to be individualized, be yourself in 
I think too many times as parents, whether you're divorced and you're co-parenting or it's a, a you know second marriage, whatever the situation might be, you're parenting with somebody else, you always feel like you're supposed to be on the same page. Mm -hmm. And we have to do things the same way and be that united front and think with one brain, right? And uh, discipline our kids the exact okay. same. Yeah. No, that is going to cause stress in your family when you think that way. Instead, if it's all about respect. So I teach people to replace those expectations with respectations. So come from a place from respect, realize that we each have differences. My kids are going to use their own process and they're going to lean into their own strengths. Mm -hmm. They're not meant to have my strengths and do things the same way that I would. And so when they get a little bit older and you can understand those about them, then you can support your kids in leaning into their strengths and how they do things best so that they don't grow up not having a strong sense of self and get lost and, you know, that whole thing. So it's important to do for yourself. It's important for you to do as with you and your partner. And, and then it's as important to do with your kids as well. Just realize that you're all different and you're meant to be different. Yeah. That's great advice. Great advice. So what do you do for fun, L? <laughs> Oh my goodness. Um, well, right now what I'm doing for fun is I bought a 1910 farmhouse here in the town that I'm living in. I'm no longer in California. I'm in Ohio. I don't know anybody here once again. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm opening a co-working space. Oh, that's awesome. How Because I work from home by myself. Yes. That doesn't serve me or my strengths well. I have too many relationship building strengths high. I don't yeah. do well with that. I need the energy and I need to be around other people. So yes, I'm opening a co-working space. It's also going to have like business training in it. And um, that's a way that I can lean into my strengths and serve others, meet others, be helpful. Um, so that is my fun right now because I get to get in the building next week and start decorating it. Yeah. So <laughs> wow, yeah. that's a huge endeavor. They yes. did, um here in my town that I live in, they I live in Billings, Montana. Okay. They have downtown, they renovated an old bank. And so nice. the pole is still there and they did that same thing. Like they made it into like an entrepreneur center and they work mm -hmm. with like, I know the small business and development officer in there, but like mostly it's a co-working space. They have, um, did you ever hear 1 million cups? No, it, it's like, it, they have chapters all over, but every week they, we meet, it's like one, over 1 million cups of coffee or whatever is like, how okay. they play. and, um, we have like, I spoke at it a few months ago, but they have different people from small businesses and people that are starting up their like entrepreneur adventure and, and talk about their business. And then everybody gives feedback and suggestions and ideas of how to grow. Oh, and I love that. I'm going to have to write up. that down. Look it up. Yeah. Because that might be something that you might want to start in your new establishment. Yeah. And because I plan to have lots of resources like that yeah. for people. And I've gone to like website trainings there and like just all kinds of different events, different, mm -hmm. they bring in like conferences, not conferences, but yep. like venues, trainers. Yeah. Venues, like, no, not venues, vendors, vendors. Yep. Um, and just different things that they have going on there. And it's a great place to go. I go about once every two or three weeks and just go and co-work and just like right. talk with other people. Like there's such a great energy. Yes. There. So I, I'm so excited for you. I love that you're Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Yes. I'm very excited. I had joined one right before I moved from San Diego and I m really miss being able to go to it because it's nice to, like you said, you go every couple of weeks, right? Yeah. It's nice just to have the flexibility. I'll go when yeah. I want. And, you know, there's no yeah. commitment. So, yeah. 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 And to be able to like, just talk with other people that are in the same mm -hmm. space and like going through very similar, you know, yeah. on a similar journey. There's definitely, I love, I love it. So oh, that's awesome. All right. Okay. And now do you have a book that you could recommend to our listeners? Yes. I would say the four agreements. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love it because it's, 
it's a straight to the point book. It doesn't go on and on and on. Yeah, it's I, only like this thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, I also would like to recommend my book. I guess I should have said yes. it first. <laughs> <laughs> the Feel Empowered Everyday By Bullet all Journal. What is it called? My, the Feel Empowered Everyday Bullet Journal. Okay. And um, yeah, I, I wrote it as a, a bullet journal style. So again, it it's not like chapters where I go on and on and on about the same thing. There's just quick to the point. It's very interactive. It's very colorful for the visual learner. Um, there's a lot of different takeaways in there. I've got QR codes that you can snap into a video, and then it has a tracker at the end for your emotional intelligence each day to just help yourself stay mindful. So yeah, that, but aside from my okay. book, like the four <laughs> agreements would be a suggestion. All right. Awesome. And now where can listeners find you? Um, feelempoweredeveryday.com. Okay. Yeah, that's How about probably, on social? On Maybe social, questions. Feel Empowered Every Day. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Pinterest. Uh, I do a little on TikTok. Um, I have a YouTube channel. Okay. And a podcast on Spotify. What is your podcast? Is it called Empowered Every Day as well? Empowered Every Day. All right. So so for those of you listening through podcasts, go and subscribe. Go subscribe to Elle's podcast. Elle, I want to thank you so much for coming on to the show today. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited that we connected.